This is an update to the previous two videos about Comet Atlas. Another comet has appeared called Comet Swan and it has Comet Atlas which represented the chief of the fallen Nephilim or the Titans as it or fallen angels and that's putting it in a simplified form but anyways as it falls this new comet is rising they actually cross one another in the sky and so I wrote a post May 5th about Comet Swan ascends gracefully as Titan Atlas falls so this video is going to be a short summary of the main post so if you want to know the details you'll have to go to 1260d.com and look for the article called comet swan ascends gracefully as titan atlas falls posted may 5th 2020. now i'm simply going to read a summary article about comet swan posted May 7th and you see it there on the screen sign of the rising beast of Revelation 13 now seen in the heavens the below two images summarize this important sign now occurring above your heads why is God displaying signs in heaven at this time it's because of all the confusion on earth with all its conspiracies people are eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that tree produces death eat from the tree of life God is giving us something better to think about right now Colossians 3 1 to 4 since then you have been raised with Christ set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your minds on things above not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God and when Christ who is your life appears then you also will appear with him in glory now for the details as I said, go to Comet Swan Ascends Gracefully as Titan Atlas Falls, posted May 5th, 2020. This is simply a summary. And may this heavenly sign provoke you to search the scriptures about the ascension of Christ as it did me. So my hope is that as I explain here briefly the sign presently occurring in the heavens, that it will provoke you to think about the ascension or the resurrection the ascension and Pentecost and these things from the scriptures and get you into the scriptures because that's eating from the tree of life rather than getting consumed by all the confusion of conspiracy theories presently being propagated to do with the current situation with the coronavirus let's continue a beast comes up from the sea now i am quoting revelation 13 verses 1 and verses verse 3. the dragon stood on the shore actually as i read this every detail of these two verses is going to be found in the sign that's occurring in the heaven right now so please pay attention so I'm going to read these two verses slowly for that reason revelation from Revelation 13 just two verses but the whole chapter is actually contained in this present sign displayed in the heavens but these two verses are particularly obvious the dragon stood on the shore of the sea 
And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. One of the heads of the beast, I put bracket here just to make it clear, Atlas. Atlas, as I said, was the, according to the Book of Enoch and other passages and books and lit literature, Atlas was the head of the seven titans who rebelled. And uh, actually, a titan is simply a residue in the Greek mythology from the biblical fallen angels referred to in Genesis 6. Okay, so one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound. But the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. Well, Comet Atlas, on the very days that I posted the previous two videos about Comet Atlas, which was on the anniversary of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, that comet broke up at that very time into four pieces. So we're going to look at that in this picture here in a second. And I'm actually just going to leave it for, for you to ponder. I'll read the headings, but uh, you really need, do have to look at the picture, read those verses I just read out of Revelation 13, and it's pretty obvious that you can see that those, the imagery of Revelation 13 is contained in the heavens. We shouldn't be surprised, the previous chapters talking about there was a sign in the heaven and a woman giving birth to a son, right? And uh, that clearly refers to, among other things, uh, the constellation of the Virgin, Virgo, and so forth and so on. Okay, it's actually interesting. I, I hope this is not a side thing. I just happened to, this morning, this, it's uh, May 9th right now as I'm doing this video. Just happened to uh, come across an article saying that Comet Atlas seems to be recovering from its fatal wound, at least uh, temporarily, the comet is undergoing some sudden and unexpected flaring up. So that's interesting. I'm not sure where that's going to go, but um, actually if you just give me a second, I'll just do a quick search for that and, uh, and uh, show you what I'm referring to. It might have bearing, it might not, time will tell. This is, comets are quite unpredictable. But uh, I do believe since this is from the Lord, whatever happens will be part of what uh, the sign is. There it is. See? Well, wow. Comet Atlas got brighter this week. It's just posted, uh, well, on, as far as Google concerned, two hours ago. And so, so uh, here we are. Um, uh, see? You get four slides of the Comet Atlas, and they're just showing you that May 5th, May 6th, May 8th, then May 9th, and suddenly it's unexpectedly uh, getting brighter. So we'll see where that goes. You can read that article for yourself. But uh, it's just interesting because it says that Comet Atlas had a fatal wound. I mean, all the articles have been saying, well, so much for Comet Atlas. Its head is dead. You know, the comet is broken up. Um, right now it's flaring up, so that's just, I find that kind of interesting. Maybe it's going to recover in some form, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so now let's look at the main image on your screen. Now it's not too difficult to um, see Revelation 13 and the whole chapter of that matter in these images or constellations in the heavens. Now this is what, these constellations are static, they're always there. And, uh, and they were known at the time of John in the book of Revelation. And uh, to, to have all these things in the, the heavens that clearly parallel Revelation 13, cannot be a coincidence. I mean, if you had one item, such as a beast, 
or, or, or a dragon or a lamb, but not the others, you would say, well, yeah, it's, there's a slight parallel. But when you have all the imagery in all its details, well, you have to have your head in the sand not to see the comparison. All right, so uh, uh, on April 4th, 2020, Nissan 10th, Comet Atlas broke into four tails or four comets that look like four horns. So you see it right here. I got this enlargement below. It's broken up. This is my Starry Night software. And the four comets have broken, sorry, Comet Atlas has broken up into four heads, which look like four horns. And I say four horns as we shall see, because Atlas, as I said here, Atlas was the chief of the seven rebel stars called Titans. This is actually referred to in the book of Enoch and other literature. Atlas is also the seventh head star in Pleiades who rides the beast. Now, I'm not going to take the time to explain this in this video. I said this is a summary and that's all it is. I, you need to go to the main post, as said, and read it, the explanations for yourselves. To those who are familiar with uh, prophecy, especially uh, constellations, it, would be more, it will be much more obvious to what, what I'm saying right now. But if not, you need to go to the post and read it for yourself. But this below here, that's the Pleiades, called the Seven Sisters, Seven Stars, and Atlas is going to swing by it with its four horn-like projections. And this will give a picture of Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, about the seven heads and the ten horns. Now it happens that the breakup of Comet Atlas, which I said happened the same days I, was, I put out the videos about Comet Atlas as representative of the fall of the devil, it just happens that at uh, that same time, Atlas broke up, and it, as I said in those videos, it was, uh, the date of the videos was Nisan 10th. Now, Nisan 10th on the Jewish calendar is the anniversary of when the Israelites crossed the Jordan into the Promised Land. That was 1406 B.C. But it is also the anniversary of when Jesus rode into Jerusalem triumphantly riding on a donkey and he was heralded as Israel's true king. If you read that passage, there's a subtle comparison to Jesus as the true king coming into Jerusalem on a donkey with Herod, King Herod, who claimed to be the king, which was really uh, peril is, um, can be compared to the devil, King Herod, or to Comet Atlas, negatively speaking. But it was a very interesting parallel. The Bible says the whole city was shaken when, because they were afraid of what Herod might think when Jerusalem rode into Jerusalem on a, on a donkey. So anyways, it was a very interesting uh, time, niece and tenth. As I said, I'm hoping that, and God, I believe this is the purpose, is that when you, you see these parallels, you see these comets passing over certain stars that are telling a story, very obvious, that you get into the scriptures, that you search these things out, you say, wow, that reminds me of this, that, and the other thing from the Bible. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to think on the scriptures, and get your mind off all the nonsense going on in the earth right now. Let's continue to read. At left is an enlargement of Pleiades, circled in yellow here, in the bull. Atlas is the lowest of the seven stars, right here. This is Atlas at the very bottom of the seven stars of the Pleiades, which as I said is within this yellow circle and rides this beast, this bull, who is, as you can see here, emerging from the sea. 
again. Remember, Revelation 1, verse 1, Revelation 13, verse 1 and 13, uh, the beast rises from the sea, you see? So this beast is rising from the sea in the constellation. Um, remember, this, this is the ancient understanding. That's why all of the, 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 the dragon or the sea monster is from the sea. The dragon stood by the sea. So you got the sea monster. You got fish bound to the dragon jumping forth from the dragon. And then you got the bull emerging from the sea because this whole part of the sky was viewed as the underworld, the, the sea, the, the sea of the cosmic world. And so the beast rises from the sea in the cosmic world. The dragon stands by the shore of the sea in the cosmic world. We always think of it in, 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 on the earth, you know, in terms of the earth. But these things are heavenly signs in the book of Revelation. And God does do signs on the earth as well. Um, but this sign in Revelation 13 clearly parallels these constellations you see on your screen. That's what the writer had in mind, and that's what the Spirit of God had in mind as he revealed these things to John, primarily. Continuing to read here, the four horns of Comet Atlas appear back up here. The four horns above it is Comet Atlas. So here you got the four horns broken into four pieces. The four horns of Comet Atlas appear above the star Atlas. There's Atlas. And the other six heads. There's the other six stars of Pleiades. This is what the sky looked like early May 29th, 2020. Right here. This little section in the yellow triangle. This is the sky on early May 29th, 2020, which is Pentecost on the Jewish calendar. The rest of the scene here in the heavens with its planets, right? The constellations will always remain static. They always appear as they do. But the planets, of course, they move along the eclip the um, ecliptic and uh, but everything else remains static. So here is Venus. Venus is, is as I pointed out, just happens to be on Nisan 10th overlapping the going through the Pleiades and almost like very close overlapped the star named Atlas. And then these stars were named this for a reason. The seven stars that ride this beast were part of the mythology, the seven fallen titans, right? And Atlas is the chief, which in turn, as I said, parallels to what the Bible has to say and other extra biblical literature, such as particularly the book of Enoch. So thus Comet Swan crushes the star head of Satan on the anniversary of Jesus' ascension. After that, power is poured out on Pentecost to overcome the little horn. And I quote these verses, Acts 1 to 2, Ephesians 4, 8, and Daniel 8. Now, this, what I just said about crushing the head of Satan, will become very obvious and clear as you read the post. And I will just do a quick... Um, look at that right now because it just happens that comet swan as it rises in the sky now while comet atlas descends in the sky and they actually switch by each other and as they do their switch one rises one falls comet swan well we let's look at it comet swan will go down here a bit below Comet Swan, now it's a date, May 20th. Comet Swan passes right over the star called Algol. You see this? Here's Comet Atlas rising up, all right? It just happens to be, first of all, that May 20th, when it crosses over Algol, is the anniversary of when Jesus ascended up into heaven. And as, as you read the post, I invite you to read, we'll see that Comet Swan represents Christ himself, his 
his, um, his ascension, his rising up from the underworld, his ascension into heaven, and then giving of the gifts at Pentecost. All the while, Comet Atlas is descending from its heights down to its depths. So they're reversing positions. But as Comet Swan here rises on the year on the anniversary of when Jesus ascended to heaven 40 days after first fruits on the Jewish calendar this is IR 26th and in other time zones 27th which is the anniversary of Jesus ascension so as Jesus ascends he passes right over this very bright power a uh, strong star well known in the sky Al Gol uh, memory serves me collect uh, correctly it's the 28th brightest star in the sky well algol in hebrew just happens to mean the head of satan that's interesting how many know that there's a star in the heavens that's been named the head of satan uh english they call it um the head of the devil or the demon star obliterates symbolically by the sword of the comet because the comet is known as a sword or a scepter in antiquity either one is significant either the scepter overthrows the scepter of the head of satan or the sword slays the head of the satan remember revelation 13 1 and 2 remember about the head of the beast being killed and also other verse it's um you need to do your study, but um, there's actually three passages in the Bible that refer to ten heads and uh, seven heads and ten horns, and each are slightly different. And so, just as the prophecies are complex along the theme of seven heads and ten horns, so the sign is accommodating, appears anyways, all three ways of looking at the seven heads and the ten horns of prophecy. So it's complex, but so is the prophecy. So why should you expect it to be something other than that? So let's just go back now. So now I invite you, I could read this, but you could, this is part of the summary. Uh, I'll just read a little bit because this is videos longer already than I expected. About the above image, the beast is Taurus the bull. The seven sisters of Pleiades rides the beast with Venus on top of the star Atlas of Pleiades. Right, right here. Or sorry, right here. Venus on top of the star Atlas. As the beast comes out of the sea, right, there's the beast coming out of the sea. Right, there's the water. The beast comes out of the sea. Note Venus was the Roman goddess of sex and war, a vicious harlot harlot also known as ishtar and isis so right away i hope you're getting a kind of a sense of how complex this is venus is the morning star well jesus is the morning star however there's a counterfeit in recorded in the book of isaiah which says that lucifer claims to be the morning star right and the name Venus itself is the Roman goddess of sex and war. So all of these things are true at once. So Venus can represent the Lord. Venus can represent the Lucifer. But Venus can also represent the harlot that rides the beast. It's that complex. But as you read the scriptures, the scriptures are, in, in, are also complex. So it's agreeing with the scriptures is what I'm trying to say. We like things simple, neat, you know, and tidy, and put God in little boxes and our theology in little boxes. But the um, Bible says, let him who has wisdom, let him who has wisdom calculate or, and discern and number and figure these things out. So it takes effort. As I've said before, lazy people need not apply. All right, so here we are. The dragon, which is the sea monster below it, gives its beast its authority. Remember that we're, we're referring to Revelation chapter 13. So here's the dragon, 
you see, Cetus, the sea monster, the dragon by the sea. It's looking and it's into the direction of the beast. The dragon gives the beast, the, the bull, its authority. And in antiquity, the bull, Taurus has a huge amount of uh, significance in ancient literature to do with Antichrist and, and everything, so many things. So we don't have time to get into that. But Taurus is very much associated with the Antichrist, with fallen beings, with different gods, and so forth. And as I say in the post, the beast here with this horn called, well, let's just see it here, called Elnath, is actually piercing the heel of this shepherd charioteer constellation above it, which I don't have in this particular image. So the bull is piercing the heel of the good shepherd. All the while, the good shepherd is crushing the head of the beast. And this is the current sign that's going on in the heavens. The lamb ram above the dragon in this context is the false prophet as it says in Revelation 13 11 to 12 who has two horns like a lamb but speaks like a dragon okay so we always think those who study this that Aries the the lamb or the ram with the two horns represents Jesus and that is true actually all these constellations can represent Jesus but remember you're looking at the sky that's been corrupted by demonic beings who have manipulated God's signs and trying to get them to speak about themselves in a perverse way. So they now represent all kinds of false gods. But originally, that wasn't the intent of God for the stars in the sky. They were meant to speak about Him, about Jesus Christ, not about these false gods. But how, however, in as much as the counterfeit resembles the real thing, you can still see by the counterfeit how originally they represented Christ and his kingdom. Again, read the post. It will explain that, what I just said a little bit more clearly. And, and, uh, but the whole book of Revelation is like that. Everything that's good has an evil parallel. By doing that, the darkness it, it reveals the light all the better. The evil only brings out the truth better. And so these constellations, though many of them have been corrupted, actually only bring out the truth of Christ better. As long as you understand that Christ is the key to understand how what, what they truly mean. So, the false prophet, the dragon, the beast. And what are these two fishes rising up? Well, Revelation 13, you read the whole chapter, it goes, uh, there's an, uh, four or five verses, talks about the captivity of his people. And so these, these two fish represent the Israel and the church who are bound to the dragon and they're seeking to escape. And I don't believe it's a coincidence that it just happens that as the, the snapshot here, as Venus was crossing over the Titan Atlas star, while Comet Atlas was being broken up, its head into four pieces, the sun was passing over Pisces and breaking, so to speak, symbolically by its brightness of its coming, the chains that hold Israel and the church in bondage to the dragon. So he's telling the whole story of Revelation 13. So I'm going to stop there and I invite you, there's a whole lot more, I invite you to look at the post at 1260d.com. As said, it's called Comet Swan Ascends gracefully as Titan Atlas falls.